Tornadoes 101. What is a tornado? Explained by Hootie. Tornadoes don't just come out of nowhere, they're born from a silent setup that brews deep inside the atmosphere. It starts with something deceptively ordinary, warm, humid air rising from the ground. Combine that with cold, dry air pushing down from above, and the atmosphere becomes unstable, like shaking a bottle of soda. But the real twist, literally, comes from wind shear. That's when winds at different altitudes blow at different speeds or directions, causing invisible tubes of air to rotate horizontally. You can't see it yet, but up there in the clouds, something is spinning. And it's just getting started. But spinning air alone isn't enough to unleash chaos. What happens next turns that hidden rotation into something deadly. As the atmosphere continues to stir, the once horizontal rotation in the clouds begins to rise. That invisible spinning air gets caught in a powerful updraft. Think of it as a vertical vacuum sucking warm, moist air upward at intense speeds. This is no ordinary gust. Inside a supercell, updrafts can reach over 100 miles per hour. When this rising air grabs hold of the horizontal spin, it tilts it upright like someone flipping a rolling barrel on its side. Suddenly that sideways spin becomes vertical. And now we've got a rotating column of air that could tower miles into the sky. This vertical rotation is called a mesocyclone, and it's the beating heart of most violent tornadoes. It can stretch across several miles and spin faster than a jet turbine. And the more that warm, moist air keeps rushing upward, the more energy it feeds into this rotation. The pressure drops rapidly in the center, pulling in more air, moisture, and momentum. You still might not see anything yet, but the forces inside the storm are tightening, intensifying, like a storm flexing its muscles. Then, under the right conditions, it happens. Condensation begins to form within the spinning column, and a visible funnel starts to descend from the cloud base. It may look like a ghostly finger reaching for the earth, narrow at first, then widening as it stretches lower. You might see it swirling debris or even flashing with bursts of lightning. But here's the thing. It's not a tornado. Not yet. Until that funnel actually makes contact with the ground, it's just a funnel cloud, a warning, a preview of what might come next. And once it touches down, even for just a moment, everything changes. It begins with a whisper, a ghostly spiral of air drifting downward from the clouds and then contact. The instant that the spinning funnel touches the ground, it becomes something entirely different, a tornado. That quiet twist transforms into a roaring beast. In mere seconds, calm can become catastrophe. Debris erupts into the air, trees bend like twigs, roads vanish under swirling chaos. And here's what makes it even more chilling. Tornadoes can go from harmless to horrifying in a flash. Some form so quickly that by the time a warning goes out, they're already on the ground. Others spin just above the surface, taunting observers before finally dipping low enough to strike. When a tornado is born, its power is measured not just by its appearance, but by what it destroys. Winds can easily exceed 200 miles per hour, with the strongest hitting over 300. That's faster than a speeding bullet from a handgun. Roofs are peeled away like paper. Cars fly through the air like toys. Wooden beams become spears. People describe the sound as a mix between a jet engine and a freight train thundering across the land. But these storms don't always behave the same way. Some tornadoes last only seconds, barely long enough to leave a mark. Others travel for miles, shredding everything in their path. Some are pencil thin, others grow to monstrous widths, like the 2013 El Reno tornado, which expanded to an unfathomable 2.6 miles across. Imagine a wall of wind that wide, grinding across the earth. To categorize their power, meteorologists use the enhanced Fujita scale, EF0 to EF5, but it doesn't actually measure wind speed directly. 
Instead, it's based on the aftermath, what's left standing, what's been ripped apart. An EF0 might just knock over some branches and toss a few shingles, but an EF5? That's catastrophic. Steel structures twisted, homes completely wiped from their foundations. The landscape doesn't just look damaged, it looks erased. And yet, for all this destruction, scientists still struggle to answer one burning question, why do some tornadoes vanish quickly while others grow into monsters? The answer lies in the unpredictable chaos of the storm itself. For all our technology, for the satellites in orbit, the Doppler radar, and the teams of scientists tracking every thunderstorm, tornadoes remain one of nature's greatest wild cards. You can have the perfect conditions, warm, moist air, dry, cold winds aloft, a spinning supercell thunderstorm, and still, nothing might happen. And yet another storm that looks almost identical might suddenly drop a twister that tears a path through an entire town. Why? That's the mystery. Tornadoes are born from a cocktail of factors so delicate, so chaotic, that even a slight shift in humidity or temperature can completely change the outcome. The right wind shear might be there, but if the updraft isn't strong enough to tilt that rotation vertically, nothing forms. Or a storm may start to rotate, but the funnel never touches the ground. Other times, there's barely a hint on radar before a full-force tornado barrels out of the clouds with almost no warning. Then come the curveballs. Most tornadoes spin counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere due to the Coriolis effect, but a rare few defy that logic and rotate the opposite way. These are called anticyclonic tornadoes, and while they're less common, they're no less destructive. Some tornadoes are so narrow they slip between homes like a thread through fabric. Others are so wide they seem to consume the entire horizon. And just when you think you've seen it all, multiple vortex tornadoes appear. These monsters are not just one funnel, but several smaller ones spinning around a central core, each mini twister capable of devastating destruction on its own. They dance inside the parent tornado, shifting direction, overlapping paths, tearing up one house while leaving the one next to it untouched. To someone on the ground, the whole thing just looks like a giant blur of flying debris. This is what makes tornadoes so terrifying. Their unpredictability isn't just about when they strike, but how. One could lift off the ground after 60 seconds. Another could intensify into a mile-wide EF5 and hold for over an hour. Some drop in open farmland and vanish into fields. Others seem to seek out the most vulnerable places, schools, neighborhoods, hospitals, and tear through them like paper. So what does all this mean? In the end, tornadoes are more than just violent storms. They're symbols of nature's raw power and our endless pursuit to understand it. They're proof that even with all our progress and precision, we're still guests on this planet, vulnerable to forces we can't always predict or control. These swirling giants don't follow rules. They don't check the forecast. They appear suddenly, violently, rewriting entire landscapes in minutes and leaving nothing but questions behind. And now you know. Follow and subscribe for more insights on science and technology.